All right, guys. Um, welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. I'm still getting over a little bit of a flu, so I'm gonna take it a little bit easy today. Uh, but I wanted to cover the uh, quiver um, item that I basically made. I was gonna do that before I got sick and couldn't end up doing it because of my voice and stuff like that. But it's feeling a little bit better, so I do have some cough drops. All right, so basically how this works is it's just a item with a inventory. I've customized the inventory so it looks um, unique. Uh, so you can basically store different types of arrows in it, and then I will basically try to make sure that there is a least one item of that arrow in the uh, inventory. So the best way to kind of demonstrate this is just to empty some of this stuff out and if you already have some in your inventory then it won't like pull out of the uh the bag but basically what happens is whatever item is closest to the zero slot i think this is the zero slot if i'm correct um will be used first so in our case we'll be using the arrow of healing potion effect uh arrows so let's see if we can't find that zombie There he is. Okay, he just went under the tree again. So as you can kind of see, it uh, shoots the um, arrow. Um, if we go and shoot that one over there, you kind of see that it kind of flickers when it updates. Now if we open up the bag, you can see it's down to 49. So let's shoot a couple more. And we'll take a look. Uh, it's down to 47. So we shot two arrows. Now if we wanted to update the um, arrows, then what we could do is we could move to spectator or the, the glowing one. And let's see if we can't find a cow or something to shoot. I don't want to get down from the tree because it was night. But uh, we'll see if we can't shoot something. Maybe... I don't know. Uh, let's hop down and then we'll try to get something. So, let's go through the woods and see if we can find some something to shoot. Uh, let's see here. Actually, there isn't a lot of creatures in this area, is there? Let's see if we can't find something. I'll cut back in when I find something. Alright, so we have a couple sheep here. So if we shoot it with the spectator arrow, well, obviously it just died, but <laughs> uh, it will put a new one into the inventory. So this was just regular arrows, so it'll basically shoot a regular arrow instead. Now if we look at our bag from our regular arrows, uh, we have shot two arrows, so we'll put only two of those in. If we want to put over spectator or the spectral ones, we would have to... Move it over to the slot over on that side, and see if we can't get that that guy right there. So there we go. We can see that the arrow actually worked that time, and we're down to 58. So basically, it just pulls it from the inventory and then puts it onto uh, somewhere in the player's inventory. If there's one arrow already in there, uh, then it won't actually pull. But if there are, um, basically, like if we take this arrow, it's going to put a new one in as closest to the slot here as possible. If there is no spot available on the hotbar, then what it's going to do is it's going to try for any of these slots in pretty much this order. So it'll try to put an arrow into that. If not, then it won't do it at all. So that's basically how it works. It just uh, stores items in there. You can take them out, put them in. And it will just pull from the uh, the bag itself when you don't have an item in it. So pretty simple system. Uh, works well with bows. Uh, you could probably do this with uh, range items as well. So custom range items. So it's pretty um, useful with the same mechanics uh, for pretty much doing whatever you need it to do. So, but. Uh, yeah, so let's go into the code and we'll see how it all works. So there is only three different uh, things that you'll need. Uh, you'll need one item, 
one item inventory and one procedure. So the procedure you can actually download uh, from GitHub and I'll make sure to provide the link in the description of the video. Uh, basically what's going on here though is uh, what we're doing is we're just basically setting the uh, Quiver slot to zero. So basically what will happen is it will, when it cycles through the nine slots in the inventory, again, there's only nine slots here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. The slot IDs are zero to eight though. So basically that's all that we need to worry about. And then we have just a basic item um, texture for the slots and stuff like that. I've just basically used a uh, image to overlay where the slots would be. Uh, for the qu quiver item itself, uh, there's no particular thing. There's just the texture. You can use the texture in your own mods if you want to. And basic properties. I uh, you can probably you should probably stack this up only to one because it does hold items so you probably don't want it to have multiple uh, stacking just in case that it um, removes the items of for any particular purpose uh, food properties there's none but we do use an inventory we need to bind it by linking the GUI that we created again the GUI is this one right here and then we're just setting our amount of slots that we have. Now, remember I said that we had nine slots just because the inventory goes to eight for the slot IDs. It doesn't mean that we have eight slots. We actually have nine. So make sure you add the appropriate amount of slots to that number and set your max stack size to 64. So you can basically put a full stack of arrows in. So that's important for those settings. Uh, and then lastly, what we're doing is we're just basically running that one procedure that we have here. And we're going to basically run it when item is in inventory tick. So basically what that will do is every tick when it's in the player's inventory, what it's going to do is it's going to try to pull the item and put it into the player's inventory slot. So let's cover that procedure quickly and we'll see basically how it works. And it's pretty straightforward. Uh, what we're doing again is we're set, starting the ID slot at zero. We're going to be increasing that number each time that this uh, procedure runs. So this basically increases the actual slot ID for the condition. And those slot IDs are basically used in these two particular condition testing right here. So Quiver slot and then we're testing for the arrow. Um, this will basically try to find an arrow in the player's inventory um, in that particular slot. So if there is a, or pardon me, in the quiver slot. So if there is an arrow in the quiver slot, then it's going to test for the first slot ID. So that being zero, and I'll count it, its way up to nine. Now we also need to make sure that this number right here is the same number as our amount of slots that we have. So we want to run this nine times, which will bring it up to the eighth ID because it will count start at zero and then it'll count up to eight, right? So we're going to be using that particular repeater to cycle through the quiver slots. So once it's done that, it's going to basically go ahead and test if there's an item in that slot and if the player has the particular item in the their inventory so if it's or pardon me if they don't have the particular item in the inventory that's why we're using the not block to basically test if it does not have the item in their inventory if this is true then what it's going to do is it's going to then set the player slot id to zero uh, what this will do is it will basically go ahead and make sure that the player slot ID um, will start at zero, which it goes up to 36 uh, for the main body of the inventory. So the hot bar is from zero to eight, and then there is the rest of the IDs, I believe, up to 35 for the other slot IDs. 
uh, in the actual inventory. So what it's going to do then is it's going to run another repeater. Uh, this will basically go ahead and test uh, for the player slot and get count of item if it's equal to zero. So basically what this will do is it'll make sure that the slot is empty. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set the the actual um, inventory for that particular slot. Uh, we're going to get the item for the, from the quiver. So again, we're getting the same item from the quiver. The ID is going to be the same when it's running this particular block. So we don't need to worry about that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say in slot of player. So the player will basically make sure that it will put into the slot that we just tested for. Now, once it's done that, uh, it's going to basically set the quiver item and it's going to basically get the amount of items and then remove one. So from the stack of the quiver, it's going to remove that one item. We're also going to make sure that we use the same item as that same slot. So we can make sure that it stays the same. And finally, we're just specifying the slot again and to make sure that it will um, take it from the slot of the uh, particular item in the inventory. So again, this section right here is going to remove the item from one item from the inventory. This is going to tell it what item that it needs to actually remove and basically replace it with. And this is just telling it what item where the quiver item is actually located. So once it's done that, it's going to basically break out a loop. What this means is it's going to um, cancel this particular repeater. So everything in the 36 slot is going to say, okay, we don't need to do this anymore. And it's going to cancel it out. Um, if this does not run, so if there is not a slot available, what it's going to do is it's going to increase the player slot ID. So this number is going to increase, which it will test for another different slot uh, available. So we don't basically override the items. And basically, if you want to add different types of projectiles, then what you can do is you can go ahead and uh, do the exact same method as we did with the regular arrow up here and just add it on to the different um, lines here. Now, you can also use potion arrows. So you just basically specify the tipped arrow and then you would basically just run the exact same thing. It will act the exact same way as long as it's the same potion arrow it will basically make sure that it's uh, used for that particular one in the quiver and it will run the exact same way so once it gets down to the bottom here it'll just increase the slot and then it'll test for the next item in the quiver uh, slot id and then it'll run this whole procedure over again until it basically goes through all the slots uh, if you have different amounts of items um, say you have five stacks of arrows and maybe a stack of um, the spectator arrows or whatever one those ones there then uh, it will basically understand that it is a copy of an item that you already have thanks to basically this particular procedure right here and this one right here so basically what those will do is it will basically know that you don't actually need those arrows in your inventory or not so that's basically it. Um, again, it's not too complicated. I would suggest just importing the procedure. It doesn't have anything that will really require um, any advanced uh, like programming or anything like that. It's just one procedure. And if you just import it, then it will be a lot easier to kind of figure out. A lot of these blocks are all over the place. so. It's uh, not exactly easy to kind of do a tutorial on how all that basically, where to find all those blocks. It'll just add more time to the video, and I have to edit this video already. So, But again, uh, that's just under triggers and then when item in update tick. So once you added that particular procedure, it will work as I expected. Outside of that, that's all that I have time for for today. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.